you see, do you think we'll see some long-term changes as a result of, of, of COVID-19 uh, in the hotel industry in particular, but also in the wider travel industry? What's going to change permanently? So that's the $100 billion question, right? There is the, oh my God, Zoom, Teams, WebEx, name, name your favorite <laughs> online tool. We're all so damn efficient now from our bedrooms or living rooms or wherever you are. Let's just keep doing that. And the CEOs and the travel managers are saying, look, why would I put my people into a ballroom? You know, mm -hmm. it's not safe. Let's just all stay home. Not all. Let's just, you know, cut travel by a lot. Yeah. That's one way. That's one train of thought. The mm -hmm. other train of thought is you are all having recency bias. You think that the last six months are like the next six months. You always think what happened then will happen forever. And that's never true, right? Mm -hmm. Post 9-11, we said we'd never fly again. And that was wrong. And in 2008, we'd said, oh, we can never meet in a resort again because of the AIG effect. And that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so today, to say today, oh, but this is different. <laughs> it's always different. <laughs> this is different. Like we won't be traveling and meeting in large groups again. There's a high likelihood that that is wrong as well yeah so when do we see travel come back i think that's that's a medical question more than a medical and a sentiment question mm -hmm. but when we look when you if you invite me back four years from now you know mm -hmm. will we see data in terms of number of rooms sold that is sort of at the 2019 level that's actually exactly what we're projecting you know so is it going to be painful tomorrow Absolutely. Is it going to be painful in 2021? Absolutely. But then things will get to the next normal and people will mm -hmm. travel again. And it's really, really hard to, over, to, to, to overcome the sentiment that people want to get together, you know, yep. and that they need to maybe not shake hands, but the fist bump or elbow bump or mm -hmm. foot kick, whatever you do, you know, to greet somebody, you know, this or that, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, that that will be very, very hard to get away from. And mm -hmm. so therefore, we are bullish on the industry. Yeah, duh, we're with STR, we're with the travel company. But you know, I think you and I share the sentiment, people will travel again. I think your data shows it, our data shows, it. I mean, you're forward looking, we're backward looking, but I think together it shows people will always want to leave where they are and go and meet with other people. Mm -hmm. So we are long-term bullish, short-term, it's gonna be painful, you know? And, and you, I don't know if you remember or if you, if you read this book, Good to Great, you know, where uh, uh, the author talked about the Stockdale paradox, you know, mm -hmm. with Admiral Jim Stockdale, the idea that you have to confront the brutal reality as you see it today without losing faith in the ultimate positive resolution of whatever situation that you're in. And you have to have these two conflicting thoughts in your mind all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to say, yes, today is terrible and tomorrow will likely be terrible too. But in the long run, the industry is resilient. We've yeah. always recovered. We will rebound. People will travel. Groups will meet. We will meet our families again, wherever they are around the world. You know? And that is ultimately good for the industry yeah. on, the, on the hotel side. Now, what I'm afraid of is that the total cost of travel will go up because you know, some airlines are not going to make it. Yeah. You know, and some airplane types, like Airbus A380, which was such a beautiful thing, it's like mm -hmm. gone, you know, the Boeing 747, so beautiful, gone, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like, so will, it's, it's going to be likely more expensive to go from A to B, but people are still going to want to go. Yeah. Yeah. 